Hello everyone, UFC Wildcat here. And I'm Powder Blue Bolts. And this week we're going to be talking about the Advocare V100 Independence Bowl between Ohio and Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, and these are uh, two teams that are um, pretty well, we're pretty good with their respective conferences. Both of them have pretty big wins, and both of them have been uh, pretty surprising this year, wouldn't you say? Um, yeah, I'd say it, um, more or less. Um, Louisiana Met- Louisiana Monroe was really surprising at the beginning of the year. They had um, a quality win against number 8 Arkansas, who really tapered off at the end of the year. But still, that's an SEC West opponent, mm-hmm. and you're a Sunbelt opponent. So I think that's really good. Um, they played Auburn really close. Probably should have won that game. They played Baylor really close. Could have won that game. But mm-hmm. again, Baylor's offense is really good. And, you know, besides two kind of glaring conference losses uh, with a home game at Louisiana Lafayette and – Going to Arkansas State and getting hammered 45-23, to 23, I mean, they had a pretty successful season. Yeah, and that all starts with their uh, quarterback, Colton Browning. Uh, this guy's putting up really good numbers, 2,800 yards on the season with 27 touchdowns. He's also their uh, leading rusher with 441 yards and 7 touchdowns, so that just kind of goes to show you how much they like to pass as opposed to run. Yeah, I really think so. Um, Colton Browning was the reason they beat Arkansas, the reason they competed against Auburn at Auburn, which is... I don't know. I think they this guy is going to be the reason if um, Louisiana Monroe wins or not. But they also have a really good wide receiver who um, Colton Browning has found um, a little niche with um, in uh, Brent Leonard. He has um, 97 receptions for 1,400 or 1,042 yards for 10 touchdowns, and that's actually seventh in the NCAA. So this guy's actually a really really good target for. Colton Browning. Yeah, and you got to think if Ohio's secondary doesn't really step up like they have in the past, that um, Louisiana Monroe is going to kind of torch their secondary because defensively, as far as Ohio goes, they're kind of middle of the road everywhere. So yeah. they got to really step up, th- step up if they want to win. Yeah, I, I think Ohio's kind of. Hmm. They start out really well. They had a great win at Penn State. You know, Penn State also had that uh, Jerry Sandusky and Joe Paterno stuff hanging over their head, but still. Going to um, Happy Valley and getting a win isn't easy. Oh, yeah. And then they rattled off um, one, two, three, seven, seven straight wins. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's really impressive to rattle off seven straight wins, but when you drop four of your last five, that's yeah. I mean that kind of puts a, a benchmark on a, what otherwise would have been a good season. And I think what really is, you have to really look at it. I mean, in their seventh game win, seven game win streak, they struggled against a Marshall team who I don't think is that really good. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. They struggled against UMass, Massachusetts, who's brand, brand new, new. <laughs> brand new to the friggin' FBS. Struggled against Buffalo. Struggled against Akron, and then that's where everything fell apart. They lost at Miami, even though they trounced Eastern Michigan. They lost to Bowling Green, who would um, play for the East title. They lost at Ball State. Got crushed actually, fifty-two twenty-seven, and then went to Kent State, and again got hammered. So this team really fell off. And they didn't play Northern Illinois, who ended up winning the MAC. So they didn't play the best team in the MAC, and they still had a pretty bad record. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of it, the good and the bad, all centers around Tyler Tettleton. Yeah, this kid can be good, he can be bad, and it really, you know, he really is like the focal point of the offense. If he does well, the offense does well. If he does bad, the offense does bad. His uh, twenty five hundred yards passing and sixteen touchdowns. That's actually a really good number, but, I mean, he's had games where he's, like, lost it in the Miami game. He got sacked late, which ended the game. And, yeah, if they can avoid that, then maybe this team can compete against Louisiana Monroe, but that's going to be a big if. But a lot of their offense centers around their running back. You want to hit up on that? Yeah, Bo Blankenship. If he can play well and run really well like the Ohio Bobcats really like to do, then uh, they're probably going to get a win against Louisiana Monroe. If he can run like he did against Penn State and during that seven-game winning streak, he finished the season with 1,500 yards on 293 carries and 11 touchdowns. So this team really, really likes to run, and just he's a really, really big part of their offense, so he really needs to contribute. Yeah, I really think that's a big integral thing. I mean, you look at the wide receivers, they've got – one of their wide receivers only got 629 yards. The next one up only has 313. So they really like to spread the ball around. But the offense is really driven through Bo Blankenship. So um, let's talk about the keys of the game. What do you think Louisiana Monroe needs to do to win this game? I think their front seven needs to really, really play well and just kind of dominate at the line of scrimmage, as Kirk Herbstreit would say. And uh, just really, really play well and stop Bo Blankenship. Because if you can stop him and make Tyler Tettleton throw the ball, um, he's probably going to show – 
how inconsistent he really can be. So if they can really focus on the run, they'll probably be able to win. Yeah. I think um, Bo Blankenship for Ohio is going to do well. And I think what really matters for Ohio is Tyler Tettleton having a good game. Can he be the quarterback that he was against Penn State? Or are we going to get the quarterback who lost four of the last five? And it's really going to be a big thing because Colton Browning is going to do what he does. He's actually a really good player. He can make some plays on his feet, and he can also pass. Brent Leonard's going to have a good day. So, I mean, what's it's really going to come down to is Tyler Tettleton going to be a turnover problem, or is he going to be – you know, is he going to be a cancer to the offense, or is he actually going to help move the offense and, you know, take the pressure off Bo Blankenship? So um, what is your prediction for the game? What do you think is going to happen? This one's a bit of a toss-up. These teams are really, really evenly matched, and I like to see that going into these bowl games. But it's bowl season. You never know what can happen, as we learned against SMU and Fresno State. Oh, God. A bit of a blunder on our part. We predicted a Fresno State blowout, and it was exact opposite. Fresno State just couldn't do anything in a 43-10 loss. Uh, however, I'm going to uh, say that Louisiana Monroe is going to win 35-24. Yeah, I like that. I I. <sighs> I, I don't know. I, I like Ohio. I like what they have. I think Bo Blankenship's a really good running back. I think Tyler Tettleton can be good, but it's... I don't know. It's one of those things that's really bothersome to watch how he just fell off late in the season. So, I don't know. I think we get another one of those games where Tyler Tettleton just becomes a huge problem, and I don't know. Things go to hell in a handbasket, and I think Louisiana Monroe actually wins big. I'm trying to think... Um, I want to say, like, kind of like the same as you, like 35, 24, some along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a pretty good score prediction. And um, But like I said, anything could happen. It's bowl season. Miracles do happen, so it's a bit of a toss-up. But uh, that's going to be all for this week. Be sure to join us next week for the Russell Athletic Bowl with Rutgers and Virginia Tech. UFC Wildcat and Powder Blue Bolts signing out.